Hickok 45 here. Can you believe I finally got my hands on a Winchester 1897 model 97 shotgun? Actually has a hammer. Let's pull it back and shoot it. <laughs> yes, I was slam firing. This is pretty cool. You want to take a look at it? Is it beautiful or what? No, it's not beautiful because it's new and has a an exquisite bluing job on it or anything. It's beautiful because it is fairly old. It's worn. Look at all those character marks, scratches, <laughs> wear on it. This one was made in 1938. I remember it well. I didn't help make it, but 1938 goes back a ways. Uh, man. And uh, we'll shoot some more of it, okay? Now, the 1897, if you're not familiar with the 1897, the Model 97, uh, where have you been? This shotgun was the shotgun. There are a lot of shotguns, but it was kind of the shotgun from 1890, get ready, 97, to 1957. You folks in Kentucky up there, how many years was that? Nobody answered. I'll tell them. It's 60 years that this shotgun, I don't know if it ruled as much as the last decade or so, but because you had other guns coming out, you had the, like the Remington 870, I think that was the early 50s. I may be wrong, but there were other shotguns, but this thing was, I think it was the first successful pump shotgun. Truly, really successful, commercially successful in every way. It was used in, in uh, by the military, uh, World War I extensively. Uh, <laughs> the the German uh, army hated that uh, because they considered it uh, a violation of uh, what the uh, the Hague Convention and uh, protested uh, vehemently about it. Thought it was just too devastating. Uh, you know, shotgun, any shotgun would be, I guess, in, in their opinion. But it was it, it was considered just a ticket or part of the ticket for trench warfare. Uh, so, uh, and I understand, I read that, uh, you know, a lot of people have grown up with shotguns, even if they're not pistol arrows, you know, or riflemen, and uh, have grown up shooting clay pigeons or bird hunting and all that. And now I've read, I don't know how true it is, but that uh, the uh, U.S. soldiers would take these things and they'd shoot the uh, grenades, like not shoot them out of the air, but when grenades were lobbed over to the trench, you know, they, they would actually shoot some of them to change course or to stop them, slow them down. You know, that, and I can believe that. You know, if you're used to wing shooting, shooting clay pigeons or birds, you know, that's just another bird. But uh, probably did happen. So this thing has seen a lot of use. And uh, in the, uh, the, uh, the version that was used in the military, the barrel was about this length and had a bayonet lug on it and had a heat shield. You've probably seen those. You might have seen them at gun shows for what five thousand dollars now they really command a hefty price this one started out with the uh, typical 30 inch barrel for the 12 gauge and uh, it was cut down cut down very well you can't really tell it was cut down i bought this from a, a cowboy action shooter uh and uh he had used it a lot it's just a, a nice shotgun here i had this butt pad on it and everything so i was glad to get it i've had it for several months now i guess just now getting around to uh, showing it to you. Maybe I have shown it to you, but we've not done a video on it. So it's an unusual gun. As I load it, you see you've got a hammer. And uh, I'll give you three guesses who came up with it. Uh, yeah, John Browning figures, doesn't it? There was a Model 93 that preceded this, but it was, uh, I think it was designed for black powder, 1893. But this one was up an upgrade of that. And it was you know designed for smokeless powder, it was strengthened, the receiver was strengthened uh, the, along the top, I think it's thicker. And uh, the, the disconnector is a little different on it. It was designed so that the bolt or the uh, slide wouldn't retract whenever you fired it. You know, in fact, you've got to push it forward a little bit to get it to come back, unless you're actually firing real ammo. And the recoil takes care of that pretty much. And it, it has a disconnector in it, or a connector, so that you can slam fire it. Like you can... You can shoot it just hold the trigger down it'll keep firing that's what i was doing on the barrel here the drum as we let off so let me load it yeah you got a hammer on this thing kind of different isn't it for a shotgun you won't find any shotguns made these days i guess with a hammer unless it's a reproduction of a coach gun you know double barrel 
something like that. It holds five, it holds six generally. These are just a tad long. It's really, I'll go ahead and try to get that sixth one in there. Ah, barely makes it, I mean barely. So uh, this does quite, as you know, if you shot a shotgun much, or you've seen a lot of our shotgun videos, a shotgun, it can be a devastating firearm. And uh, that's why it's used in the military, still is, you know, to this day. And uh, this thing, uh, saw its way around, no doubt about it, World War I and afterwards. Let's, uh, let's shoot something that will react a little bit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> do I have more ammo? Yeah, I do. Click. And you, now you've got your bolt. It, it's not my favorite shotgun, but I like it, uh, partly because of the history. Uh, I mean, well, because of the history, and it is a shotgun. It, you notice the uh, the bolt, how it comes back here. So you know, it catch you on, on the it will catch you on the hand there if you're not careful. Uh, so that's a little bit annoying, which uh, you don't get with you know modern shotguns. And of course, you got your hammer and everything. So that really sets it apart from a lot of other shotguns. All right. So let's load him up again. And it was, uh, it came out in, uh, I think, 12 and 16 gauge. The 12 gauges were 30 inches generally in barrel length. And I believe the 16 was 28. But uh, that was, I believe, the only gauges it came out in. But there were different configurations of stock and all of that from Winchester. And uh, just amazing. Uh, John Browning it just never rested, did he? He was always coming up with something that would end up being a classic. 60 years, 60 years this thing pretty much led the pack in this kind of shotgun. All right, you know what we have over here? We have a two liter. Let's shoot him with a shotgun. I'm sorry, whoever gets this one. <laughs> Can we shoot it one more time? Yeah, that one's really shot up. <laughs> uh oh. Oh. Nice thing about shooting two liters with a shotgun is it blows everything in that direction. Uh, not so much with the watermelon though. Oh, yeah, sort of. Nice. A little mist there. Let's smoke some pot. Now that is smoke. That is smoking pot. <laughs> no doubt about it. Well, look at that smart elk two liter lying up there. <laughs> Who do you think he is? I tell you, there's nothing like an old shotgun that has character. This one does. It really does. Uh, like I say, John Browning was uh, he was a pretty good uh, firearms inventor. He, you know, the 1887 lever shotgun. He was interested in getting shotguns that were uh, you know would hold multiple rounds. Uh, something besides a double barrel and uh, you know we had the lever gun and then the pumps and uh, he was pretty successful at that this is uh this is cool he did a rifle you know, was it 1890 the 22 i guess i'm not as familiar with that but he pretty much uh, i don't know if he perfected the pump but he really uh he brought it out in in firearms that uh, we just could not resist and i like the way this loads i'll have to say you know, big, the receiver bolt there uh it's it's just so easy to, to load unless you try to get more in than than it hold three four five let me demonstrate that trigger again i'm going to just keep my finger on the trigger i'm not going to pull it every time got the one in there first all right actually i guess what I, I don't know if i pull it here if it'll start or not but yeah i did okay now i'm not going to let up on the trigger So I'm actually firing it with the, the pump handle there, basically. When I bring it forward, boom, you know, my finger's already on the trigger. The Ithaca Model 37, lots of those were that way. You've seen that demonstrated here, right? So the hammer really uh, is a distinctive feature of this thing. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? Well, I'll tell you one thing about this one. They, uh, they came out with the solid uh, frame shotgun and everything in, in 97. And then one year later, they came out with this one. And make sure it's clear. You release the slide right there. It is clear. 
and I'm still not 100% sure where that ought to be when you take it down. But this is a takedown model, okay? Pull forward, okay. And then you, you push this little button in up there, and you spin the magazine, and then you pull out on it. Let me put it on here so I can get to it better. You, you pull out. I'm not even taking it apart many times. I think the uh, slide needs to be back a little bit, I guess. Take some of the pressure off. You pull it forward. There we go. I didn't have it spun around enough. Then you need to put the slide forward. And then you break your shotgun in half. There you go. You put it in your briefcase. So it's a, on top of being a very powerful package, it can be a fairly small package. That's pretty cool. Stick that in your briefcase, right? And then, stick them back together. Oop, need to slide before forward. All that stuff in the way. Yeah. I'm not sure I did that right. Yeah, I did. Whew. How'd that barrel get hot? There we go. And then you push the uh, magazine back down. Yeah, there it's down. Spin that. Uh, make sure it's all the way down. Spin that magazine back around and push the pin back through. And you're ready for action. Okay, it's not meant to be done, you know, a speed drill necessarily. Obviously, uh, for me, it wouldn't be a speed drill, but you can break it down. Pretty interesting, and it's nice and solid. It's got a solid lockup. So, pretty nifty uh, shotgun, I'll have to say. Uh, if I was going to battle tomorrow with a shotgun, you know, I'd, I'd take my Mossberg or my 870. Uh, but, uh, you know, th this would do just fine. It's just got a couple things about it like that that make it a little awkward. Uh, this is uh, heavily used in cowboy action shooting. In fact, the owner used it for that. Uh, a, a lot of people that do the cowboy action shooting shoot a double barrel, but uh, the people really trying to, well, it's different classes, uh, but still trying to be really speedy, uh, use these and they, they train to load them a certain way and they can be actually faster than a double barrel. Well, I know you're thinking, well, yeah, of course it holds six rounds. No, you can only load two when you're in cowboy action shooting. It doesn't matter whether it's a pump or a double. But there are ways you can do it that actually make it a little faster. What should we shoot? Uh, oh, I see a skillet down there that needs to be addressed. Yeah. <laughs> cowboy. <laughs> that carried away there. We peppered him. We peppered it. We're not going to shoot hot, high brass in it. It uh, probably would be okay, but I don't want to, you know, 1938, I'm not going to take any chances with it. It's not used to shooting that really hot, high brass stuff. I have lots of shotguns. I can fire that in, okay? But I will probably load it again and shoot something else. Uh, what else about it did uh, I neglect to tell you? You know, it's your pump shotgun. The difference is, of course, things I pointed out and it, it breaks down which is kind of cool. And uh, you know, your slide release right there. And it won't come back right there. So I've got to push the button and push forward a little bit and then it comes back, okay? So that operates or pull the trigger. Okay, so it won't come back. You've got it fixed. Push the button, it still won't come back. Well, generally I've got to push forward a little bit. All right, now you don't notice that when you're actually firing though. All right, so I love a old gun like this, the character it's got. Uh, so played a, a, a key role, as I say, in World War One, and you know the police shotgun. This thing was, was used a lot in uh, police work, uh, civilian hunting. I mean, after all, most of them came with a 30-inch barrel or 28-inch barrel, so it was a hunting shotgun primarily. And uh, the trench model, as they call it, had the short barrel, I think, 20 inches, and the bayonet lug and everything, the heat shield. And uh, those things are, if it is one that was genuinely uh, made to be a trench gun, used in World War I, they are, uh, in, before I ever got interested in one of those, I'd research serial numbers and, and whatever I needed to because somebody could cut one of these down and try to make it look like an original trench uh, gun and uh, you know, try to charge you thousands for it. Uh, so 
I forget what they go for. I know it's a big price though, because there just aren't that many of them there in any kind of condition uh, out there. But you'll see them at, at gun shows and around. You know what? That garbage can has not had enough shots on him. So. Yeah. Click, 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 bang. <laughs> oh, look at that smoke coming out of there. Pretty cool. So anyway, I'm happy to bring you the Winchester Model 97. Uh, it, uh, it, it reigned supreme as a pump shotgun for a long time. And uh, yeah, if you can imagine, uh, like today, we think of, if we think of a basic pump shotgun, now there are a lot of them out there now, but uh, the Remington 870, the Mossberg 500, 590, you know, I guess you could say this was you know, kind of the Remington 870 of, of those years, of those decades, or the Mossberg 500, so to speak. And uh, this has a lot of, a lot of history uh, associated with it. And there's no telling how many, well, they made a million of them, or over a million, you know, in those 60 years. So there's a lot of them out there. You might have one. You might have one like this. Uh, like I said, a lot of people use them in cowboy action shooting, and a lot of people probably still hunt with them. You know, there's no huge disadvantage to using an, an old design like this because it pretty much works, does what it's supposed to do, throws a shot out there. Uh, you, you might uh, have a newer shotgun because you want to fire uh, you know, like three inch shells in it or something like that, or really, really hot high brass. But uh, these things are, these are pretty cool shotguns. I'm really glad to have one because I like shotguns, as you know. And, and the fact that it's old and has character just adds to it. Life is good. Since I'm still here, let me thank SDI for all their help. SDI is a fully accredited online gunsmithing school. Check them out at sdi.edu. We'd also like to thank Bud's Gun Shop and Federal Premium for all of their support. You can find us on Full 30 also now, and you can find the links to our Facebook pages and the other YouTube pages in the description of any video. So I invite you to check out the description in every video or any video, you'll find what you need to know. And you'd better do it.